everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will discuss the relationship between free energy and the equilibrium constant, as well as look into the equilibrium constant's dependence on temperature. So in the previous video, we learned that delta G of a reaction non-standard conditions equal to delta G of the reaction at standard conditions plus RT natural log of Q. We also learned that the Gibbs free energy of a reaction at non-standard conditions is zero if you're at equilibrium. So that's equal to the Gibbs free energy of a reaction at standard conditions plus RT natural log K. So if we're at equilibrium, then Q is K. And the Gibbs free energy of the reaction at non-standard conditions we derived to be zero in the previous video. If we were to rearrange this equation, then we could say that the Gibbs free energy of the reaction at standard conditions is equal to negative RT natural log of K. And that's the formula you should remember here. And so in this figure, showing you three different graphs under different conditions, one where the K is really small and therefore the reaction um, is the reverse reaction spontaneous, meaning the forward reaction is non-spontaneous. And this one K is large, meaning that the forward reaction is spontaneous, the reverse reaction is non-spontaneous. And then if we're at equilibrium, then the Gibbs free energy at standard conditions will be zero. And the reason why that is, is that if we're at equilibrium, then K is one. And if K is one, then this whole term, natural log of one is zero, so this whole term is zero. So let's write down that trend. So if K is less than one, then the Gibbs free energy under standard conditions is a positive value and we know that if it's positive it's non-spontaneous and we understand that if K is less than 1 we have more reactants than products so that also indicates that it's not going forward. Now if K is greater than 1 then the Gibbs free energy of the reaction is negative meaning that the forward reaction is spontaneous and then if we are equilibrium where K is equal to 1 then the Gibbs free energy of the reaction under standard conditions is equal to zero. And once again, you could plug in one here and realize that this whole term would end up being zero. So let's go ahead and do a, an example problem where we use the standard free energies of formation data to calculate the equilibrium constant at 25 degrees Celsius for this following reaction. And so if we look up in the appendix in the back of our book, the Gibbs free energy of formation, and these will be in kilojoules per mole. We can calculate the Gibbs free energy under standard conditions. Remember products minus reactants. So one mole of dinitrogen tetraoxide, and then minus reactants, two times 51.3 for the nitrogen dioxide is equal to negative 2.8 kilojoules per mole of that reaction. The temperature for working at 25, if you add 273.15, this is 298.15 Kelvin. Delta G of the reaction is equal to negative RT natural log of K. The natural log of K, if we were to rearrange this equation to solve for the equilibrium constant eventually, we would take the standard Gibbs free energy of the reaction divided by negative RT, and then we take the E of both sides. So K is E to the delta G of the reaction over negative RT. This is equal to the negative 2.8 kilojoules over negative 
8.314 times 10 to the negative third. Make sure you convert the ideal gas constant from joules to kilojoules. And then times 298.15. And when you plug that into your calculator, you should get 3.09 for your answer. And is that spontaneous or non-spontaneous? It's definitely spontaneous because the equilibrium constant is greater than one and the Gibbs free energy of the reaction under standard conditions is negative, indicating a spontaneous reaction. Now using this formula, we can also look at temperature dependence of the equilibrium constant, which is something we've talked about before when we discussed the equilibrium unit, that the equilibrium constant changes with temperature. And so that's the reason why I always told you what temperature you were working at when you were doing the equilibrium problem. So let's go ahead and derive that. So we know from a previous video that we can calculate the Gibbs free energy of the reaction from enthalpy minus T times the entropy, delta H minus T delta S. Now we just learned that delta G of the reaction at standard conditions is equal to negative RT natural log of K. I'm going to divide everything by R T, so natural log of K is equal to the enthalpy over R T minus the entropy over R. So divided everything by R T. That should have left a negative there. <laughs> the negative there and then multiply everything by a negative and, and pull out the x term you'll see what I mean so negative delta h of the reaction at standard conditions over r times 1 over t you'll see why I do that plus entropy over r so the reason why this equation is written this way, and this is a good equation to know, illustrates the relationship of equilibrium constant K, not little k rate constant, but big K, equilibrium constant, as a function of temperature. And the reason why I wrote it this way is because it looks like the equation of a line. Y is equal to mx plus b. So if you were to plot natural log of the equilibrium constant on the y-axis of your Excel graph and 1 over t in Kelvin on the x-axis, you could solve for the slope, which would give you the enthalpy of the reaction if you multiply by a negative r, as well as using the y-intercept in order to get the entropy of the reaction. So the slope of this line is negative enthalpy of the reaction over R and the y-intercept is equal to the entropy of the reaction over R. Alright, so now if you have limited data, let's say you only have initial and final conditions, then you can use this formula below. And that's just like I said, if you only have initial and final conditions um, of the equilibrium constants as a function of temperature, okay? So this just shows you that, yes, the equilibrium constant does change if you change the temperature. It's a, um, definitely dependent on one another. In addition, we also learned that 
there's a relationship between the equilibrium constant and, and that's what we've learned in the equilibrium unit, as well as the Gibbs free energy of the reaction. Both allow us to determine the spontaneity of the reaction, which is what we're the most curious about. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.